All right, let's say it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, Gene, you get your Bible carried everywhere you go. Amen. Mark in it. Write it. And um, we're going to hear from you. Good reports. Amen. Praise God. All right. Um, I want us to, um, to look at, um, I want you to open your Bibles and hold the place to the book of Job chapter 42. And then we're going to read some in Matthew. Job, that Job Psalms, you can find it right in there. It's in the Old Testament. All righty. Find Matthew chapter 4, please. Okay, in Matthew chapter 4, in verse 23. And I'm going to bring you just a short message tonight with a nugget of truth that I think God wants me to bring because he just dropped this in my heart and I know somebody here is going to get blessed by it. Shout, I'll take the blessing. Verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing Everybody say healing. healing. Healing all manner of diseases, sickness, and all manner of diseases among the people. See, it doesn't matter what's wrong with you. That covers it all. He healed all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people. Say all sick people. They were taken with various diseases, torments, those which were possessed with demons, and those that were lunatic, and those that had the palsy or paralyzed, and what? He healed them, and there followed him great multitudes of people. Could I have an amen? In chapter 9, verse 36, But when Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. He was not moved about how much money he could raise out of that crowd. He was not moved that here were some more names for his mailing list. You know, people get tired of people coming here and preaching and then writing you all the time for money. Throw, throw those things in a wastebasket unless God tells you to give, you know. We have good preachers here, but uh, sometimes people complain. Say, well, I wish you hadn't, wouldn't have people. It would always write me for money after they leave here. Well, he was moved not because he was going to get a mailing list. Can I have an amen? amen. Or not that he was going to get money out of them. He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. See, now he looked, now look up here just a moment. He looked about the harvest. Brother Sam, you know this is true in India and other places of the world. He talked about the harvest because the sick people were out there uh, as sheep without a shepherd and needed somebody to minister healing to them. See, the harvest is brought in by miracle power. That's one reason the hunters have such success all over the world. They bring healing and deliverance. Give them a good amen. amen. See the loudest dinner bell you can ring to bring lost people and get their attention is the fact that there is healing for their bodies and their minds. 
deliverance from demon powers. Then said he, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. And that, there's no chapter heading there. Jesus didn't stop and say, well, that's chapter 9. I'm going to start on chapter 10. Neither did Matthew. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, those are the ones that were praying for the harvest to have labors. And he gave them power against unclean spirits. Say, I have power over demons. Power over demons. To cast them out. And then it says, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So whatever Jesus did in those cities, he gave his disciples the same power. Now Jesus had the spirit without measure. We have the spirit with measure. So, you know, we're, uh, we're not uh, uh, going to become, you know, as, as proficient in the healing business as Jesus was. But all together as the body of Christ, we can see the miracles of God. Every believer can have their part. Now, flip back over there to Job, and I'll tell you the little nugget of truth that I had on my heart tonight, that Jesus does want us well, and there are many ways to get healed. Now, Jean, she made the journey all the way down here from outside of Mobile, and God saw her get in her car, and God saw her get here, and God saw her come to this church, and God answered her prayer, baptized her in the Holy Ghost, showed her she had authority, and she'll never be the same. Amen. Can I have an amen, Jean? Can't hear you. Amen. And Verda's going to take care of her. Tell you, when Verda gets hold of them, they're never the same. Praise God. And there are many ways to be, to, to, to be healed. Anybody here never been sick in all your life? We'll bring you deliverance if you'll stand up. How many of you have had a few aches and pains and battles? Put up your hand. Well, there are many ways to be healed. We know we call for the elders of the church, the leaders of the church, and ask them to anoint us with all and pray over us the prayer of faith, and uh, the, the, it'll save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. We know that scripture. We know they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We know many ways. You know, there's the supernatural gifts of the Holy Ghost, whereby God sovereignly, instantly heals and delivers people. We know that's true. But God dropped in my heart for us tonight the way Job got healed. You know, you know, somebody said, I'm God's Job. Well, you ought to get healed if you're God's Job. He got healed. Job was sick, some, uh, they tell us about six or seven or eight, nine months, that's all. Uh, it wasn't a lifetime when he was sick, you know. He was sitting in all of his prosperity. He was sitting in his health and wealth and, and prosperity. And the devil came along and stole it all. You, if you had no book but the Bible, you'd know, that's the oldest book of the Bible, you'd know that the devil is behind every ache and pain. Now, of course, we can in the natural bring on our aches and pain, fall or something like that, or get out in bad weather and just bring it on ourselves. But behind it all, there is a demonic force and a supernatural evil power, but God wants people well. Say, God wants me well. God wants me, wants me strong and healthy. See, we got to, we got to fight for our health. And uh, we got to stand our ground. And um, here is one way that God heals. In verse 10 of 42, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job, that is, he healed him. When? Everybody say when. when. Look up here just a minute and let's say when five times. God healed Doty when? God healed Brother Osteen when? God healed you when? There are some whens. And sometime after when, there's a different message, but this is the message God wanted me to bring you tonight. God healed Job. Turned his captivity. Notice God calls his sickness captivity. He does not call it a blessing. Jesus said to the woman that was all bent over, 
Woman, you are loose from your bondage. He said, Oh, not this woman who, is, who has been bound by Satan, lo, these 18 years, be loosed on the Sabbath day. Jesus called sickness bondage. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So it's called oppression of the devil, bondage of the devil, and captivity of the devil. And I don't know about you, but I don't like any of that. I'm not going to learn to live with arthritis. Somebody, I met a woman, she may be here tonight. I said, how you doing? She said, well, if it wasn't for Arthur, I'd be all right. I thought it was her husband. It was arthritis. I said, well, let's get rid of Arthur. Amen. But notice, God turned the captivity of Job. He got him out of the devil's hand. He got him delivered when? When he prayed for his friend. Well, you say, well, i got a lot of good friends. I don't mind praying for them. That is not the kind of friends Job had. When you got friends like Job, you don't need enemies. Here are men who were close to him, revered him and honored him, and yet when he sat in the ash heap, scrape, scraping himself with a piece of potsherd, boils all over his body, they came into his presence and condemned him and judged him. I say, when you got friends like that, you don't need enemies. Now here, you can imagine Job, you read the book of Job in the Living Bible. It is so funny. I mean, he gets wild in there. I mean, you, ought, you, read, you get part of it, you know, in, in the King James, but you read it in the Living Bible, and it is hilarious. I'm telling you, Job was a man with a backbone of steel, and he didn't mince any words. I'll just take time to read. You can read it in an hour. Just sit down with the Living Bible and just read it. Do you good. But uh, knowing Job, he got so mad at him, he could have killed him. He said, no doubt, wisdom died with you. <laughs> he said, I know God as well as you know. They came up there and told him a ghost. I said, a, a spirit came by. And my flesh stood up. And he said, what do you mean? I'm sick coming down here trying to scare me with ghost stories. I mean, he was wild. And Job wasn't anybody, to, he wasn't somebody just to lie down and take it. And knowing that, I know, he thinks, I would like to choke each one of them. I would like, if I had a rope, to hang them up by their toenails. I would like for them all to get 2,500 boils all over them. Those are natural thoughts. Don't tell me Job didn't think that. Read the book of Job in the Living Bible and you'll feel his, his anger. Oh, he said, I, you ought to, somebody ought to choke you. you. You're not anybody's friend. You come around here. Here I am. I've helped you all of my days and my words have put you on your feet and I've counseled you and helped the poor. And you come here. Oh, I wish I had strength to get up here and I'd beat the divot, living daylights ever what out of ever one of you. That was his attitude. I mean, that's, that's a natural thought. Sometimes you want to take a ball bat and knock people into the next county. Am I the only one that has a criminal mind? I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. But in the natural, I think strange things. Mm. So I'm saying that because Job had a problem with his friends. He was muy angry. All you Anglos and gringos don't understand muy. That means very. I mean, he was seething, 
by the time all, and then God got on him and he didn't get mad at God and God wilted him down there. But God, Job was mad at his friends. And you know a lot of you have friends done things to you? It's a sad thing when a friend really turns on you. I mean, when we got the baptism in the Holy Ghost, we had friends, close friends. They have not spoken to us to this day. Weren't your friends so happy when you got to speaking in tongues? <laughs> friends will come and say, surely you've done something wrong. God is judging you. They'll say all manner of things. And, and the tendency is to want to kill them in the natural. Not really kill them. I mean, just kill them, you know. <laughs> I mean, just the natural mind. But you see, we can't afford to act like the world. And he got so upset over people. I'll put it that way. People. It may not be your friend. It may be your employer. It may be your wife. It may be your husband. It may be your children. It may be your neighbor. It may be somebody else that you got. You have something seething down on the inside of you some relative that's done something to you and some experience you had to go through because of people who did you wrong. Job was in that condition and Job was sick and Job wasn't going to get healed until God, he got to do something about that situation. See, a lot of times you can have people lay hands on you till you're bald-headed. You can pray till your knees wear out. You can fast till you can't even crawl to the refrigerator. <laughs> you can do good things and, everything and never get healed. There is a key to healing. There's some key. If, you don't, if you're not healed, keep on looking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking, keep on asking because there is a key. And one of the greatest keys is for God to get us to do what he said to Job. He turned his captivity, got him out of the devil's hand, got him healed when he was willing to pray for those friends. And I hear some of you, surely, Brother Osteen, if you knew what people had done for me, to me, you wouldn't even bring this message. That's why I'm bringing it. That's why I'm bringing it. God put that, just drop this into my heart. And I know somebody here, I know we can all profit by it. Surely you don't want me to pray for these friends that have done me so much harm. And then somebody said, yeah, I'll pray for them. But I'm going to pray God, I'm going to take them out. I told you about that old man. Stood up and said, I have no enemies. They said, you don't? That's wonderful. He said, no, all the so-and-sos died. <laughs> he just outlived all of his enemies. When you harbor something inside of you, you are not hurting the person for whom you have dislike. They are sailing along Happy as a lark. The only one getting hurt is you. I knew a man who was married and they were having trouble. And they had a big, beautiful home. And uh, he got mad at his wife and his wife got mad at him and they, they didn't get a divorce. Or, uh, they just kind of had such an argument. He left, slammed the door and left. Said, I'm going to teach her a lesson. And he stayed off for days teaching her a lesson. And one night he decided he'd drive by and see how miserable she was. And he told me, he said, I drove my car close, slowly by my big, beautiful mansion there. Said the big picture window was open and the curtains were pulled and my wife was sitting with a big bowl of ice cream watching television. He thought, what a fool I am. 
He wasn't hurting her. He was hurting himself. He said, I got back in and got with the ice cream. Hallelujah. So we go around and say, bless God, I'll teach them. I'll teach them. I'll ignore them. I'll hate them. I'll just, I'm not going to have anything to do with it. You're not hurting them. They're out eating ice cream. The one you're hurting is yourself. You got the poison in you. It doesn't hurt them. It hurts you. So I'm convinced that if we will pray for people who have misused us, abused us, and done things wrong to us, it will break the power of the devil and slam the door whereby he's been getting in. Pray for the friends. Pray for the people that have talked down on you, discouraged you, done despiteful things to you. Jesus said, pray for those who despitefully use you. And, and, and that's the, one of the keys. So let's keep our spirits clear. Because when we begin to pray for the people who have done us wrong, we will find that our captivity has turned and we are loose. Amen, 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 amen. I had somebody come to me the other day. Let me see, what was that about? Um, they called me and, and said, uh, I want you to forgive me. And I didn't know anything about that. It's just something they held in their heart long years ago and, and just said, uh, I just want you to forgive me. And, and you know, it didn't bother me at all because I, I didn't know I was supposed to forgive them. But uh, they had been carrying that around in them. Now, it's not anybody, I don't think it's anybody here in the, in the church. I forgot just where it was. But I remember how it impressed me that they called, and I didn't know anything about it. A lot of these people that you know, they might know that you're holding things, but get it out of your system. No, it wasn't anything bad. It was a trivial thing. What'd you say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I know what it was. Yeah. A preacher called to me and said, uh, you know, I've been holding things in my heart because I, had, I was going to have a meeting and uh, we had asked you to announce the meeting and somebody told me you didn't do it. And I've been real upset with you and said, uh, I just called to tell you I'm sorry I shouldn't take such an attitude. And I called him by name. I said, I made that announcement. What dumb dumb told you I didn't? I did announce it. And he said, you did? I said, yeah. But thank God he knew how to stay in health. He wasn't going to hold that. And he found out that somebody told him a lie about it. So sometime when we investigate, it isn't near as bad. So say, I give up. I surrender. Everything I have against anybody. Now put up both hands like you're surrendering. Say, I surrender. Anger, bitterness, disappointment. I surrender it and I pray for them. I'm not going to call their name now, but I know exactly who I'm talking about. I pray, oh God, that you will bless them, save them, deliver them, set them free. I release them. I forgive them. In the name of Jesus, now, no more hatred, no more malice, no more bad feeling. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your blessing to be upon them. In the name of Jesus, now I receive my healing in my body. Lift your hands and praise Him for it. Praise Him with all of your heart. 
Praise Him for your personal deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now, put your hands down and bow your heads one by one. If you know, I'm not going to ask you what it is. Don't be ashamed. I'm about to keep your eyes closed. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But you know God spoke to you and you released something that's going to bring healing to you. Would you stand up and just lift your hands and start praising for, praising God for it? Just, just stand up. I mean, it's real definite in your heart. You know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And you're, you're just willing to stand and say, I got rid of it and I, I now receive health. Everybody say it out loud with them. I now receive health. I now receive health. And healing in my body, in my mind, in my blood, in my nerves. I'm strong. I slam the door on the devil. I slam the door on demons. I slam the door on sickness, oppression, and discouragement. I shut the door. I, my spirit is clear. My heart is clear. I have released it. God has turned my captivity. Hallelujah. Everybody clap for joy. You can be seated.